Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll preview or screen some award-winning experimental, short experimental films. Actually, it's experimental films from our guest from for today's show, Minnesota State University Moorhead Professor in the School of Media Arts and Design, Kaya Christensen Nelson. Uh, Nelson. Boy, Kaya, that was a long <laughs> title to get out there. But Kaya, first yeah. off, as we get started, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Um, I uh, was born in Jamestown, North Dakota, and I uh, grew up in Fargo. I left, though, um, when I discovered I wanted to uh, do film, and there was no film major uh, at that time at MSUM. Um, and so I uh, went elsewhere. I went to the University of Minnesota, spent some time there, um, went to um, New York for a while, worked for Law and Order Criminal Intent in New York City, um, lived in Iceland two different times, uh, went to graduate school in Milwaukee at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and um, went back to Iceland and then found my way back to MSUM. It's a very odd circular path. <laughs> well, it might be, but maybe not. You never mm -hmm. know. As I said, we're going to look uh, at some of your award-winning uh, short experimental films uh, a little bit later in the show, but so let's find out more about you. In sure. 2014, I understand you were named Minnesota Professor of the Year by Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, it was uh, uh, a complete and total honor and, to be honest, kind of a surprise to be nominated for the award. Um, and then there's this whole long application process um, that you go through. Uh, with lots of different written elements and letters of recommendation from lots of different parties of people. Um, and then you wait a really long time to hear. Um, the interesting thing about the way that that award is given also is that you have to meet um, a national threshold for um, some kind of scoring that they do. Um, so not all states have winners every year. I think that there were only something like 30 32, 36 states that were uh, awarded this past year. Um, so, you know, like I said, it was um, a real honor just to be nominated. I, I did not expect to be the Minnesota Professor of the Year Award winner, um, but uh, it's been a really humbling experience. Well, but the, you talked about uh, maybe a little bit more about the nomination process, but, you know, how long did it take, did you, you know, from the time you were nominated until you found out about it, and how did you find out about it? Um, let's see, I think I was nominated in um, March, um, and then um, there's maybe just a few weeks that you have to kind of get your materials together, and then um, you send that off, and I wasn't told until the fall, um, and then you're supposed to keep it under lock and key with nobody, nobody's supposed to know, and um, I flew to Washington, D.C., and that's when all of the press went out about it, so, um, you know, there was only a couple people on the MSUM campus that knew about it, and then um, the day that they did the um, ceremony at the National Press Club was when everybody found out. Hmm. Well, that's got to be tough to keep it under, <laughs> yes. uh, under yeah. lock and key. Well, I, I assume with an award like this, it reflects on you, of course, your mm -hmm. colleagues and your students. Mm -hmm. can, can you talk some about uh, some of the people you work with and the program itself? Sure. Um, I have amazing colleagues. Um, uh, Tom Brandau is a uh, film production professor who I've worked with. Um, I believe he's been there um, for about 10 years now, uh, maybe 11 years. Um, uh, professor Raymond Rea also was on the production faculty. Um, between the three of us, I think all of our work is very, very different. So it offers students um, not only just different teaching styles, but also um, the way that we work in film is very different. Tom does more kind of dramatic narrative. Um, I'm a little more on the experimental side. Ray does a lot of documentary work. Uh, and then we also have Dr. Tony Ada, who is our um, film theory, film history professor. So I think all of our life's, life experiences are very different and we work very well together. So mm. that's, I think, good for the students. Yeah. Um, and we have a wide range of students as well. We've got students coming to us from Germany, Brazil, um, Kentucky, New York. Um, it's, it's a, I think, a different um, spread of students than you would see in most programs at MSUM, which tends to be more of a kind of regional um, draw, uh, MSUM does, but um, our program is bringing students from all over the country and, and in some cases all over the world. Hmm. Well, that's good, and I know it's got to make it nice for the program. But So can you talk about, understand the last, 
a couple of years there's been some realignment in the department. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this? Sure. Um, you know, our uh, history as a department, as a as even as a discipline on campus, um, is quite long. We we started teaching film in the 1970s. T Dr. Um, Dr. Ted Larson uh, was um, a professor of film history, um, taught through communications, I believe. Um, so for a while, you could teach or learn about film uh, under the umbrella of speech communications, and that evolved. Um, most recently, though, uh, we are now the School of Media Arts and Design, um, and uh, and our major for film production has been, I think it's our 10th birthday this year, um, and that was put forward by Professor Rusty Castleton, who hired me um, uh, eight, nine years ago. And um, right now, under the School of Media Arts and Design, we have film production, film studies, um, a new animation, uh, a new animation major, um, we also have graphic design, graphic communications, and a fairly new media arts minor, which kind of allows students a pathway to look at all things media arts, and it's more of an interdisciplinary, um, you know, studies degree where you're getting your hands on, on sound and uh, film and uh, graphics and all kinds of stuff. So, well, with that said, is teaching something that comes easy to you, or, or do you approach, you know, how do you approach the students who are preparing? Mm -hmm for careers in media arts, mm -hmm. film, and video? Uh, well, I think, you know, teaching was always something I, I kind of wondered about, but didn't, you know, it's, it's hard to get teaching experience. Um, and so when I was looking at graduate programs, I, I really f uh, wanted to find one that gave you uh, lots of hands-on experience with teaching just to make sure it was really right for me, because I think um, it's one thing to make a film, it's very different to teach people. Um, and uh, it's also really hard work, so you have to know that you enjoy doing it. <laughs> um, uh, so in many ways, though, I see teaching um, much like uh, making um, media arts related work in that uh, it's a lot about organizing and kind of seeing all of the big picture, but at the same time not losing sight of all the details, too, because um, as you probably know in productions, there's a lot of little details that go into making that big picture. Um, so for me, it's kind of teaching to transitional moments and, um, you know, meeting students where they're at and um, getting them all up to where they need to be. Okay. Well, I, I know we talked about you do experimental films. First off, tell the folks, what is an experimental yeah. film? Um, well, I think that that's, uh, that's a, a difficult thing to answer in a short period of time, but okay. um, mostly I would say that um, if you think about a traditional narrative piece, which is what most people view on a day-to-day -day basis, um, telling a story from point A to point B. Experimental <clears throat> filmmaking is more, I think, about communicating concepts or emotions in sometimes more abstract ways. Um, and a lot of that is technique related, so uh, maybe communicating um, an emotion through editing uh, that wouldn't necessarily be um, a traditional storytelling technique. My take on experimental filmmaking, or my, my own work, I should say, is more situated kind of between. So I, I do, I have a tendency to make experimental documentaries or experimental animated work. So um, not necessarily the hardcore experimental um, uh, mode of filmmaking, but kind of things that uh, go between different modes, if you will. Okay. Well, how many films like that have you made, and what, what are maybe some of the awards you've won? Um, I, I don't know that I have an accurate count for you right off the top of my head, but um, I, you know, over the last decade or so, I've made um, several films. Um, when I was in graduate school, uh, one of my pieces won, um, uh, was, uh, it was awarded a regional academy, a student academy award um, for alternative filmmaking. That's what they called it, was alternative mm -hmm. filmmaking. Didn't go on to the, didn't get the national win on that one, but um, I've also won a Kodak Vision Award uh, uh, from one festival, um, a, an award for editing through the Ann Arbor Film Festival, um, and uh, there's also a, an association called the University Film and Video Association, which is kind of a national, um, somewhat international uh, 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 association of um, various professionals and professors. and. Uh, one of my pieces, Fate, won their award for merit in documentary filmmaking, which is kind of their highest award. Um, so those are just a few examples um, of pieces and 
other films have just gone on festival circuits and played at different film festivals. So sure. it's been fun. Yeah. Well, with that said, you mentioned you mm -hmm. lived in Iceland. Tell us about your time in Iceland and were you filmmaking then, I assume? Yeah, um, the first time that I lived there um, was when I was a college student. I studied um, at the University of Iceland, um, just took a year to try my best to learn Icelandic. Um, my family, um, part of my family immigrated from Iceland and settled in northeastern North Dakota, um, kind of in the mountain area of North Dakota. And um, so part of it was just kind of going and exploring my roots. And then later on, a few years after that, um, I was awarded a Fulbright Fellowship and went back for a year to um, just do some postgraduate research. and. So essentially the, the grant was um, a full year funded just to go and make a film. Um, so I lived on the northern coast in Skagafjörður where I made a film called Svate. Um, and a lot of it is just about um, kind of the blending of mythology, like old folklore of Iceland, and then also blending that with family history and how um, there are sometimes facts about your family and sometimes some more fictional storytelling elements in family. So it, blends some animation and some experimental techniques and then also some traditional kind of documentary pieces where you're just watching day-to-day -day things in Iceland like their annual horse roundup or um, scenes from the sewing factory there, things like that. Hmm. Did, I, I take it you enjoyed your time in Iceland? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience and we met some really wonderful people there. Um, haven't been back so much. I've been back a couple times since then, but Things have been pretty busy here, so. Well, when we were preparing for this uh, interview, I know Matt Olin, our producer, uh, saw an article from a couple of your students and how you had helped them, I guess, uh, where they were drifting or, or maybe uh, kind of getting on, getting them back on the right path. Uh, Zach Mar uh, Marion and uh, Katie Dero uh, were both quoted. Uh, can you talk about them and maybe how you helped them? Sure. Um, Zach and Katie are both, um, they both were amazing students um, and they continue to do really amazing work. Um, Zach, uh, both Zach and Katie were actually two of the first students that I had when I came to MSUM. Um, I uh, was living actually in Iceland and Rusty uh, interviewed me and hired me for the job and I came to MSUM um, with a really uh, small yet fastly growing um, film program. Um, you know, I think that for both of them, um, they just needed they just needed to be able to explore and take control of something, and to have somebody say, "Yeah, you can go ahead and do that, and you're going to be successful at it," and and to have somebody believe in them. Zach had a lot of interest in directing, but I think that he um, found that his skill set was really naturally in the realm of editing and. Um, uh, so therefore kind of felt like, well, I must be an editor then. But now he's um, at uh, UCLA in the directing program and um, doing graduate work there. Um, Katie, uh, she was in a class of mine where we were setting some long-term goals. Um, she wanted to go to Africa to do some social justice um, and mission work with uh, uh, communities, um, African communities for clinics and things like that. So she put together this grant proposal and this kind of documentary project idea and she graduated and you know it's for most people just a class project and she actually went and did it. She was a one woman crew, went to Africa, did all the fundraising and made a documentary in Africa. So um, now she's in graduate school for um, counseling I believe. So um, not necessarily the traditional film track but um, really found her calling um, doing that work. So. Good. Well, you, you commented some about it, but what is your classroom approach? I mean, you, you uh, like them, like you, your students de definitely are sort of let them explore their creative mm -hmm. side. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think different classes are, um, have different approaches, so it sort of depends on the class. But um, for some classes, um, I provide uh, what I call optional assignments, and the idea is to give them several different options in the hope that they find something that really speaks to them so they're not necessarily having to do something that they feel like is not of interest to them. Um, there's other classes, though, where they don't have options. <laughs> they have to do um, specific assignments. Um, but that's one method just to try to get people to uh, find some, um, something that speaks to them, something that they're passionate about, and I, I find that that approach 
um, helps people to get a little bit more motivated and, and maybe go a little bit deeper than they might normally. Mm -hmm. what, what are most students looking for as a career uh, when they get at getting their film studies uh, degree? What kind of, what kind of opportunities are out there for them? Um, I think that you know a lot of times people come in and, and think that it's either Hollywood or bust, that there's, um, you can only go to California, otherwise you're not a success. And um, what I try to um, uh, communicate is that you know success comes in all different sizes and, and looks a lot of different ways. Um, and you can find it in a lot of different places. So our students have um, done a lot. We've got a, a kind of a hefty little pool um, in Minneapolis, some in Los Angeles. We've got a pool of students in New Orleans right now, um, some in New York, um, some in Fargo-Moorhead. Uh, some have worked for Prairie Public Television, in <laughs> fact. Um, but they're doing a lot of different things, and uh, it's anything from um, film festivals and galleries. Um, one of the, like the director of the Wexner Center for the Arts for Film and Video is one of our grads. Um, we had a student who was the assistant to William Shatner, um, but also stuff behind the scenes, you know, doing cut, uh, cutting for trailers. Um, so all, all different kinds of, uh, of work. The, if you think about where screens are today and where moving images are, it's, it's quite, um, quite amazing what kinds of jobs there are out there. Well, is, is it a, a risky career choice? I mean, there are people who get mm -hmm. degrees in liberal arts or anything else that don't end up working in their degrees. Right. So is it any different than any other degree? Um, I think that it's definitely a competitive field. Um, mm -hmm. I think part of it is a willingness to go where the jobs are. Um, because there are certain markets that are much bigger than others. Um, so that's part of it. I think, though, you also really have to love doing it because um, this isn't necessarily always a nine to five job. There are some jobs like that um, that you'll find, uh, but some of it, there are long hours, strange days, odd, odd locations, and things like that. And that can be very exciting, but that's also not for everybody. Um, I think that you need to be kind of a self starter and um, um, also really good at communicating with people and working collaboratively. I think if somebody has those skills, then they'll do just fine. Well, I, I, I know you're involved in the Fargo Film Festival. How important are film festivals for students to get their work shown? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great experience. Um, it's one way that students can uh, really see how their films um, play against an audience and to actually interact with an audience. Um, because sometimes that will get lost in the classroom environment where they're just making work for the immediate, their immediate classmates or their immediate group of friends. So it gets them thinking about films well beyond the classroom walls. Um, in fact, some of my assignments include festival submissions on them just to try to get them, again, thinking about their work in a greater context. But um, the Fargo Film Festival is great. Uh, uh, it's been expanding every year and um, we get films from all over the world. Um, it's also just a fantastic way for our students to come and interact with filmmakers and see different work and um, even seeing what other students are making at other institutions because we get film festival submissions from all over the place. Has technology made it easier for, for people to do filmmaking? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the access nowadays is just completely different than even when I was going to school. Um, so the access is great not only for cameras but also for editing software. Um, but I still think that even if there's uh, easy access, it doesn't necessarily make for a great film. So story is always really important. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, if people mm -hmm. want more information about the media arts and design mm -hmm. at, uh, at your school, where, where can they go? Who can they contact? Sure. Well, they could contact me. <laughs> um, uh, we also have a website, um, mnstate.edu slash smad for School of Media Arts and Design. Kaya, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. We're out of time. All right. Stay tuned for more. Kaya Christensen Nelson is not only a great professor at Minnesota State University Moorhead, she is also an award-winning experimental filmmaker. You may ask, what is an experimental film? Well, here are some examples of Kaya's work.
Vi att börja dig att snöa snämma flätta år i september. I kjolfaret fyllt du hästar i regning. Likt och flem var i stjörnad av släppne. Åt fäde hästenum sen oden, hejdne guden. Åt de isländska hästarna kom nyder av fjötlunum. En så stormsveper anta á hemleid fyrir vetturinn. Óðin guð styrjalda, guð skáldskapar, guð spáðóma. Honum fylgja tveir hrapnar að nafni hugginn og munnin, hugsun og minning. Og slepnir hesturinn hans er tengtur hell. Afi minn dó árið 1996. I barnæsku kynti hann mig fyrir hestum. Hann sagði að fler væru íklæður undum heimsins og tengdu okkar bæði fortið og hjálpuðu okkar í nútið. Jag heter Kaja. Jag är västerislandingur. I am an American of Icelandic ancestry. My husband and I are living on the north coast of Iceland, on the fjord from which my family emigrated. In the distance you can see a little gray house. It stands on the spot where my great-grandfather lived before he left. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Post this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.